the developers of Space Engineers just had a developer live stream. And they talked a lot about the Grid AI system. They focused the whole live stream about it and also revealed a lot of hidden secrets that they said had not been revealed in any other blog or leaked information. So I'm gonna summarize that two hours of live stream, hit some of those highlights, and talk about all that, along with a very cool video demo right at the end, in under 10 minutes. So without any waiting, let's jump right in and see what they had to say about these five blocks that make up this AI grid. So there is five AI, AI blocks. You have the AI flight or move block, the AI basic or task block, the AI recorder, sorry, it's a, it is a task block, the AI recorder block or path recorder, um, the AI defensive and the AI offensive block. So there's the five blocks and they also revealed a brand new block that we haven't heard about, but one that I've really wanted. And do you guys want to know one bonus thing that is in there that isn't strict, well, it is functional, but it isn't strictly, uh, you know, connected to AI. And that is the small connector. Yes, the small connector on small grids is here, it's coming. It's, you're gonna have access to it right now. They went on to explain more about each block that I'll be covering, but first I want to talk a little bit more about this small connector. One of the problems I've had with the small grid and using a connector is how big the actual connector that you have in game is. It is able to connect up to the large grid, which makes it very, very handy. But this new connector block is going to be small. It's like one block big, I believe. And the small grid connector you had before took up a volume of 18 blocks, which is quite large. And on a lot of bills, it just made it look unwieldy, which is one of the reasons why I like to use a hinge because it was that one block size you could use to connect up your Rover or something like that to your grid to repower it or download ores and things like that. So I really like this small connector. It's going to see a lot of uses and make a lot of bills really a lot cleaner looking, I think. They also made some major changes to the custom turret controller with the ability to track the sun and the ability to maneuver a grid while inside of the custom turret controller. Um, we also have some improvements to the custom turret controller, so it can now track the sun. Um, there's a checkbox uh, down, if you scroll all the way down, I believe, uh, there should be a checkbox and then you can set it to track the sun. So if you have any um, sort of uh, uh, solar, like solar arrays, panel right? arrays, exactly, yeah, and you, you can set it to, you know, automatically follow the, the rotate and follow the sun. Um, also, the movement input is now allowed when controlling a custom turret. So similar to regular turrets, for all you people who like to build uh, tanks or other sort of rovers, or even grids with turrets on them, I guess, um, you can now control your grid similar to how you would normally, and using, a, you know, taking control of a normal turret, how you can normally control the grid as well. It's, that's, uh, and that's such a big deal. Now also does that. Yep, that's absolutely. really great because, yeah, I've seen so many tanks and, and stuff using the custom controllers and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but then not being able to control the grid so yeah those yeah. are just two small things and i know everyone's uh -huh. hyped about these ai blocks and yeah. hyped about the well, event they're... controller but some of these quality of life things you can never what's the oh, word? yeah totally you can never like uh underestimate the power of mm -hmm. some of these quality of life things so yeah, yeah. sun tracking on the turret controller <laughs> and control of the turret controller mm. while also controlling the grid so in these ai grid blocks i got a little excited about the ai recorder now, before, if you wanted to set waypoints, you had to get into the remote control block, fly it, and then set GPS points as if it was your character, then go back into the remote control block, apply those GPS points, then apply any actions. It was very clumsy. But now, all you have to do is fly your ship or drive your rover or whatever, have this recorder on, and it will record the waypoints for you. And you have a lot of control over the granularity and how often it sets a waypoint, but you can get a lot more fine control over the flight path of your drone. But the second part of being able to use this flight path you set with the recorder is what really I thought was amazing. These flight paths can move with your grid. Can the waypoints be related to a different grid and ship? Yes, they can. Yes. That yeah. is where this very important thing we mentioned earlier, which is the reference beacon. 
uh, if you have a beacon nearby on another grid, you can use that beacon as basically the reference point. And so when that beacon moves, the waypoints that you recorded will be relative to that beacon. So um, let's say you have like a, a carrier ship or, or something, right? Um, important. You put a beacon on there and then, you know, record a path for your uh, for your fighter to, to dock or undock. Um, that path will stay with the carrier. So if you move your carrier, you know, you fly somewhere else with your carrier, your fighter and that path will still be valid because is relative to, the, to yeah. the carrier. This is a feature I'll be able to use immediately with my mobile space station, and one that I know a lot of people have wanted for a long time. It'll just travel with you these waypoints and make everything work. This is a fantastic addition to the whole drone technology. But they gave even more inside information about a lot of these AI grids. Let's hear what they had to say. So the stay at range, we, we have this, 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 the minimal and maximal distance there and yep. also they have the evasive maneuvers toggle which will be give it a bit more randomization to um to try and confuse the the turrets or the the players who are controlling those turrets um mm -hmm. there so there's also that option there was a lot to unpack with the ai offensive block and right here he was talking about just one of the attack patterns of staying at range so even though you could stay at some distance you still had the option of checking evasive maneuvers so your drone would still try to dodge a little bit while attacking so that that one's like it's actually trying to evade the other one i, I believe i mean it does a pretty good job actually at it now i imagine there's probably some trade-off of the accuracy of your drone going down if it's also trying to do evasive maneuvers at the same time but you really kind of get to see the depth of this whole system here they even talked about a hit and run kind of attack pattern, which again, then opened up a whole nother series of different options that you could set to sort of fine tune the attack pattern that you wanted. But it didn't even stop there. They talked a lot about the facing mode and the ability to orient your drone or your even your big ship in a direction that was maybe optimal for its guns, whether they be turrets where you'd want it to face forward, the ship to face towards in some direction, or choose static weapons if that's what you had. So you could have the drone try to face the static weapons toward the enemy. It was just really complex. Like I said, a lot to unpack just with this AI offensive block. The defensive block was no slouch either. And I could really see this being handy if you've got a mining drone out and it starts getting attacked. You just want it to leave and come back if it's being attacked. I also really like the way he described the sort of cowardliness of the defensive block. And then you have a flee to um, waypoint as well there. Yeah, so. and this waypoint can be uh, either a beacon or, uh, or a GPS uh, coordinate. You know, if there's there's an unarmed drone or whatever uh, coming near you, okay, that's not really a big threat, so you can just ignore that basically. I under sorry, I understand now. It's it's not the ship. It's not the ship's subsystems. It's the other grids subsystems. Yeah, it's, sorry, it's I, the the enemy with the subsystem. Yeah, right. Now I understand. That makes more sense, of course. So d d choose how brave your your drones are. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. We also got to see all of the different actions that could trigger the event controller block. There might be some tears. Hopefully tears of joy. Let's go. <laughs> so I'll just quickly read them. So these are all events that can trigger actions of our blocks. Altitude, angle change, block added, block removed, block integrity, cargo fill, cockpit occupied, connector connected, door opened, that's what it's right now, gas tank filled at a certain percentage, landing gear locked, piston position, uh, power output stored power. So these are all the ones we have currently. Now this was the one area where I was actually a little disappointed because there's a lot of other actions and a lot of other blocks I think would be really important. And even people in chat were frantically typing in, well, what about when a merge block merges or unmerges and all kinds of different things. So I imagine that they're probably going to continue to tune this and add more actions as time goes on. One thing I was really happy to see was the AND condition at the bottom. If you add multiple blocks, um, then you can also have the button all the way at the bottom that says AND gate, and then um, it needs to trigger basically 
true for all of those blocks. Because this way you could evaluate two, three or more blocks and have them all have to reach some given state for the event controller to fire. This was now really getting into some proper logic. It'll probably prevent the need for a lot of timer blocks and other complicated things to get something to work. So I was really happy to see that. They gave away a lot of other bits of information and I could tell that they were almost really itching to just tell us things that were coming in this next patch. Like this one right here. Ooh, there's so Even much more. <laughs> like all these cool the, blocks that, that you've seen, you know. It's uh, in the backgrounds here. Oh uh, yeah. Wait, is, is that two by two wheels I see there, Sander? Mm, yes, maybe. <laughs> well, we'll find out when, when we actually release this, uh, okay. this update. I hope you enjoyed this summary and getting to hear what I felt were some of the highlights out of it. And if you got anything out of it, feel free to like and subscribe and watch the whole dev live stream on YouTube. I, I watched the whole thing and I really enjoyed it. Until next time, take care and I'll be talking to you later.